Hello everyone, welcome back to Following a Freight Train. In this video, we will be taking a look at another BNSF Railway freight train in Washington State. You may remember that in the very first episode of this series, we followed a train that BNSF designates as RNWE803, or the Bellingham Local. For this episode, we will examine the train that regularly interchanges cars with RNWE803. This train is a manifest that moves freight cars in between BNSF's Delta Yard in Everett, Washington and a much smaller yard located about 70 miles to the north in the town of Custer. BNSF's official designation for this train is M-EVECUS, a low-priority M or manifest train traveling from Everett to Custer. This train also has a southbound counterpart known as M-CUS-EVE. For this video, we will be covering both the EVE-CUS and the CUS-EVE as they make one complete round trip from Everett to Custer and return over the course of a 24-hour period. Throughout its journey, the EVE-CUS is routed over BNSF's Bellingham subdivision. For those not familiar, this is BNSF's primary rail line between the Greater Seattle Area and Canada. This route was originally constructed by the Fairhaven and Southern Railroad Company in the late 1800s. Great Northern Railway bought out the Fairhaven and Southern through one of its subsidiaries less than 10 years after its incorporation. Typically, three EMD four-axle general-purpose series diesel-electric locomotives are used on the Everett to Custer manifests. Locomotive types include GP25s, GP38s, GP39s, GP40s, and GP60s. Often, a cabless GP60B booster unit is placed in the middle of the locomotive consist or lash-up. The two other locomotives, both featuring operator's cabs, are oriented facing out from the locomotive lash-up. On occasion, EMD six-axle special duty series units are used in place of the smaller GP series locomotives. The main purpose of the Everett to Custer Manifest is to supply cars to both Bellingham for the Bellingham Local and to Custer for industries along the short Cherry Point subdivision in North Ferndale. Because the EVE CUS and CUS EVE are through freights, they don't make many stops en route to switch out cars. So, once again, the focus of this video will be on various significant or scenic locations the train passes by on its journey from Everett to Custer. We begin our journey, once more, in BNSF's Delta Yard in Everett, Washington. The Everett to Custer Manifest is typically a daily operation, usually leaving Everett fairly early in the morning. Often, the train will depart Everett before sunrise, although this can vary with time of year, planned track work, and other trains that need to traverse the Bellingham subdivision. Once the train has the all clear, it leaves the yard, slowly making its way north across a series of sloughs at the Snohomish River Delta. After crossing through the sloughs, the EVE CUS passes under Interstate 5 through the city of Marysville and then off to the northwest as it heads towards Stanwood.
The train continues northwest as it nears Stanwood. Unless there are planned meets with other trains, the manifest usually continues non-stop until it reaches Bellingham. BNSF GP60 number 181 leads the EVE CUS as it passes the north end of Stanwood siding. In Mount Vernon, the train crosses over the Skagit River as it continues to zip along. Just north of the city of Burlington, an SD-75 is in the lead of the Everett to Custer Manifest on a sunny summer morning. Just south of this location is where the BNSF Sumas subdivision leaves the Bellingham subdivision. At Blanchard, the Bellingham subdivision begins a several mile long stretch of running right along Puget Sound. This is perhaps the most picturesque portion of the entire line.
Crossing into Whatcom County, the train passes through scenic Larrabee State Park. Just around the next curve, the train will pass through the second and third of a total of four railroad tunnels on the entire subdivision. As the train nears the city of Bellingham, it travels over a causeway across the north end of Chuckanaut Bay and through the last tunnel on its journey to Custer. At Marine Park, the EVE CUS comes around another curve and into the Fairhaven district of Bellingham. Frequently, the train will stop here for an extended period of time to wait for one or both of the morning Amtrak Cascades passenger trains. On a much sunnier day, the train is seen from the other side of the tracks at Post Point. Over the course of its journey, the manifest makes only one scheduled setout in between Everett and Custer. The setout is made at the BNSF yard in Bellingham to supply the Bellingham local with various cars for industries in Bellingham and Ferndale. Locomotives used for this local are also dropped off in the yard as needed. Since the rail line through downtown Bellingham and the BNSF yard does not have a passing siding, the Everett to Custer train must wait here at the South Bellingham siding for all other train traffic to clear in between Bellingham and the next passing siding in Ferndale. If the train is not through well ahead of the two morning Amtrak trains, it will typically wait at South Bellingham for northbound train number 516 to pass before proceeding to the Bellingham yard.
With southbound Amtrak 517 through, the Everett to Custer train continues its last few miles of running along the shore as it skirts the waters of Bellingham Bay. At Boulevard Park, the freight crosses Bayview Drive. The South Bay Trail in the background utilizes the former right-of-way of an old Northern Pacific Railroad shipping pier in the harbor. The manifest snakes its way through the former Georgia Pacific Bellingham lumber mill site in downtown Bellingham on approach to the Bellingham Yard. BNSF B40-8 locomotive 563 brings the EVE CUS out from under the Chestnut Street overpass and in front of the former Great Northern Bellingham Depot. In mere moments, the train will come to a stop so the crew can make the set out. The crew of the EVE CUS has brought their train to a stop to set out cars and locomotives in the Bellingham Yard. It will take the crew anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour to drop off cars in Bellingham depending on how complex the switching move is. To simplify the drop off, Cars for Bellingham are almost always placed on the head end of this train. Typical car traffic for the Bellingham Yard includes box cars, refrigerator cars, center beam flat cars, various log cars, short and long covered hopper cars, and trash container cars for Washington State's Waste by Rail program. Once all cars have been positioned or spotted on the correct track, the train will zoom up the hill to Ferndale and Custer, now just over 10 miles away.
Continuing up the grade, the train approaches the Country Lane Crossing. From Bellingham to Custer, the only cars being hauled on the train are tank cars and hoppers, all destined for businesses along the Cherry Point subdivision. A later-than-normal EVE CUS crosses the bridge over the Nooksack River and around the big sweeping curve in downtown Ferndale. Custer is not far away. BNSF 563 leads the train through the only road crossing in downtown Ferndale. In the background is the Cargill Grain Elevator, a major customer for BNSF's Bellingham Local. Rolling along Portal Way, the train's speed has dropped significantly as it approaches the Custer Yard and the end of its journey. Following the morning arrival into Custer, the crew of the EVE CUS is done with their day's work. In the middle of the day, the locomotives are used by a new crew for a different train designated as RNWE-801. This is one of the Cherry Point subdivision switch jobs. In short, the locomotives are turned on the Custer Y, cars bound for Cherry Point are taken up the Cherry Point subdivision, and new cars are brought back to Custer for the journey south to Everett that evening. At Custer, any cars that were dropped off by the Bellingham local are added to the train. On a spring evening, the southbound Custer to Everett train departs Custer as light begins to fade. The CUS EVE typically departs Custer sometime after 7 p.m. As such, the entire trip for much of the year is made under the cover of darkness.
In downtown Bellingham, the southbound passes the old Great Northern Depot and the locomotives for the Bellingham Local. When locomotives for the local need to be taken back to Everett for servicing, the CUS EVE usually makes a stop at the yard to add them to the train behind the leading locomotives. Otherwise, there are no regular setouts or pickups on the southbound trip. As seen from Boulevard Park, BNSF 181 leads the train along Bellingham Bay. At the south end of the park, a trio of SD-75 locomotives pulls the CUS EVE along the water. For a brief period, six-axle EMD locomotives could be seen regularly on this train. As of 2024, it is relatively rare to see them on the EVE CUS and CUS EVE.
Depending on timing, the CUS EVE will often meet northbound Amtrak train 518 at South Bellingham siding. Once 518 has passed through, the freight will continue south to Everett. Even during the longest days of the year, the Custer to Everett train is usually through Mount Vernon after dark. On this particular day, however, the train came south in the morning, likely a very late train from the day before. It is seen here passing the old Mount Vernon Amtrak station. We bring our journey to a close with one more look at this very late train. On the south side of Marysville, the CUS EVE crosses over EB Slough and under Interstate 5. Delta Yard in Everett is less than three miles away. As the Custer to Everett Manifest finishes crossing over the slough, we have come to the end of our journey. Thanks for joining me for this look at another freight train over the course of its normal operations. If you'd like to see more episodes of Following a Freight Train, or if you have suggestions for other freight trains you'd like me to follow, let me know in the comments section below. As always, a big thanks to all my supporters on Patreon. To receive regular notifications every time there's a new video, Click on the subscribe button and select the receive all notifications option by ringing the bell. Check out my other social media pages for even more great train and railroad themed content. 
I'll be back next Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time with an all-new railroading adventure right here on the YouTube channel. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.